When I was around nine, nine years old, I went to live with my grandmother in Phoenix. I came to know the Lord at the age of 10, and I was baptized at the age of 10 shortly after. I said the sinner's prayer at around 11 or 12 years old. I went to a little Baptist church in Bunch, Oklahoma, and I had a fear of God, and I think it was a, a fear that He was out there. If you did wrong, <laughs> He was out to get you, you know. I can remember, I talked to God often, I remember standing in my dorm room and talking with him. And I remember saying to him, I know you're real. I just don't know what to call you. And the Lord spoke to me and said, call me Father. You know, all through my life, things have just come easy for me. Uh, and I was a bright student, I was a good athlete, and everything just came easy for me. When I was 16, I noticed a young man by the name of Larry. <laughs> I kind of avoided meeting her. Someone had introduced me to her, and uh, I, I fell for her, and I had feelings for her. And uh, we started dating in our senior year in high school. Both graduated out of, at Sequoia, yeah, and uh, we both we're going to go to school, to college. And I went the summer semester at OU, a special student on the uh, Oklahoma City campus. And Larry came back from OU, and we did end up getting married at that time. It was, um, it was a good marriage, and we did have two children in five years, our oldest daughter and uh, TJ. We went to church. We did seek the Lord, and it was a happy time. You know, there's chapters in, in people's life that you don't like people to read or you don't want to reread, and, and that's one. I, I, it happened. I was working at the hospital. You know, you get, get to talk with coworkers, and you know, you get to joking with them, and things escalate from there. And, and so I had an affair, and as I said, I was the one that had the failure in the marriage and, and uh, we uh, split after, after that. At one point, I just knew that things weren't gonna work out. Larry did come in one day and he chose to leave. Proverbs 14, 12 says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end is death, you know, the ways of death. And I think that's where I was at at that time. I was, I was just living my life, writing, like I said, writing my own book, writing my life, doing what I wanted to do. During that time, I do remember God providing every need. Uh, the children were in school. They were doing well. I knew that if I did not stay in church, things would fall apart. If I did not seek the Lord, things would fall apart. If I did not pray, things would fall apart. If I did not tithe, things would fall apart. I just try to keep those basic principles before, my, before me. I remember at one point trying to move home, closer to home, closer to my parents and I remember looking for a home close to them, but had a dream. And in the dream, I was just instructed not to move. I thought to myself, I know God is able to do above and beyond all things, more than we could ever think. That's His Word. But I just knew in my heart that Larry would come home. He did bring the children home about seven years um, later. He had a visitation with them and they went with him. 
he brought him home and I remember asking him, Larry, are you ever going to come home? And he kind of looked at me and smiled and said, no, I won't be coming home. I said, okay. Someone had invited me to a church in, in Tulsa and I, I went, I hadn't been in church for since we, we divorced. And, uh, and that day they had a, a illustration sermon of uh, the prodigal son. They had two ch stages set up. This was a big church. So they had two stages set up with, they had it set in like biblical times and modern times. And, and they had several scenes of different scenarios of life. And one of them was a, a divorce and, a, and a, the prodigal son as, as pertaining to divorce and, and, you know, reconciliation and things. And it really touched my heart. And, and uh, after seeing that, I rededicated my life to the Lord and, and uh, started seeking Him. And, and the Holy Spirit kind of prompted me to go back and talk to John Anna. And <laughs> he did come in one day and ask to talk with me. So we went out on the, on the porch and he asked if he could take me out on a date. And I just said, no, I don't want anything to do with you. But he would stop every evening and ask to take the children. And one day I asked her, I said, would, would you consider, you know, taking me back or getting back together? And uh, as I thought, you know, she kind of laughed in my face. And I wasn't ready to remarry this man. I wasn't ready to get involved. I wasn't ready to um, put myself, my heart back out there. <laughs> and I wrote down this long list. You do everything on this list, I'll consider remarrying you. And the Lord was with him, had everything accomplished on that list, probably within three months time. I've always loved my kids, and I've always loved being around them, and, and, and I felt like they were at the age where they, they really needed their, their father, because I didn't have one at that time. And it even goes back to the marriage, I didn't know how to be a husband, I didn't know how to be a father. I told him, I said, just set a date, and I'll, I'll marry you, just set a date. It was so precious knowing that God never forgot the faith. He never forgot my prayers. Ephesians talks about the husband and, and the wife. You know, marriage is God's oldest institution, and 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 Paul talks about it all through his, his gospels about. He uses the marriage as, as, as an example of Christ and the church. And you know, he says that Christ gave, gave himself for, for the bride, for the church, and he tells the husbands to do that too. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17, where he, he says all things, if any man be in Christ, old things have passed away and all things have become new. And that's, that's kind of what had to happen. But I also hope that my children saw my faith, and I hope they saw that God can move mountains. Men don't come home after 12 years, 11 years, 10 years of being gone. I didn't have the strength to bring my husband home, but I had the faith that God could bring my husband home. I think it's, 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 it's my privilege to show my love for Christ by showing my love for my wife, by honoring her, by caring for her. To me, that's what marriage is now. It's a commitment to, to love one another, to cherish, to, to, to forgive and have grace. And now I know, like I said, looking back over all the process of the last 30, 40 years, is, is my identity is in Christ now. And, 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 and that, that gives you a purpose and it gives you everything you need it's it's to know that you you have a you have a hope you have a destiny you have someone who loves you all the time